Welcome to this BBC News special. In the last several hours, Russia has invaded Ukraine, advancing on this country in several directions. Early this morning, we heard explosions here in the capital, Kiev, and in other major cities. These are dramatic and dangerous times for Ukraine, for its neighbors, and for many countries around the world. President Putin said he would not invade his neighbor, and now it is unfolding, and the shockwaves are spreading around the world. We'll report from many capitals, as well as from Ukraine, over the next half hour. But just let's take a look at the latest developments. The day began with a televised address by the Russian President Vladimir Putin. He announced what he called the special military operation in the Donbass region of Ukraine. He said the action was aimed at the demilitarization and denazification of Ukraine. Russia says it is targeting military infrastructure with what the Kremlin calls high precision weapons. Missile strikes and explosions have been reported in several parts of Ukraine, including near major cities. Ukraine's foreign minister has accused President Putin of launching a full-scale invasion. World leaders, including from the United Nations, NATO, the US, UK and European Union, have strongly condemned this offensive. Ukrainian officials say Russian military convoys have crossed Ukraine's border in a number of places, from the east, the south and the north, including from neighboring Belarus. This operation follows President Putin recognizing the independence of two self-proclaimed People's Republic of Donetsk and Luhansk in eastern Ukraine earlier this week. Let's take another look at all these latest dramatic developments, Arunai Enger reports. It's long been threatened and now it's started. Explosions were heard in Ukraine's capital, Kyiv, and here in Kharkiv. CCTV shows Russian military vehicles crossing the border from Crimea. This after Russia's President Vladimir Putin announced he was embarking on a military operation. Whoever tries to interfere with us, and even more so to create threats for our country, our people should know that Russia's response will be immediate and will lead you to such consequences that you have never experienced in your history. Weeks of intense diplomacy to avert war and the imposition of Western sanctions on Russia has failed to deter the Russian president, who has over 150,000 troops along the borders of Ukraine. The US president, Joe Biden, said he will address the US public later today and added, the prayers of the entire world are with the people of Ukraine. President Putin has chosen a premeditated war that will bring a catastrophic loss of life and human suffering. Russia alone is responsible for the death and destruction this attack will bring. And the United States and its allies and partners will respond in a united and decisive way. The world will hold Russia accountable. International condemnation has come quickly. The Prime Minister Boris Johnson said, I am appalled by the horrific events in Ukraine. He added that President Putin has chosen the path of bloodshed and destruction by launching this unprovoked attack. He promised the UK and our allies will act decisively. Earlier, Ukraine's president spoke in Russian during nine minutes of an 11-minute speech, addressing Russians directly with a heartfelt appeal for peace between Russians and Ukrainians. Who can stop this war? People. And these people are amongst you, I am sure. President Putin launched the attacks while the UN Security Council were meeting in an emergency session in New York. In an angry exchange, the Ukrainian ambassador challenged the Russian president of the council to tell his country to stop the attack. The Russian president declared the war on the record. Should I play the video of your president? You declared the war. It is the responsibility of this body to stop the war. Smoke billowing from a Ukrainian military airport. Recently imposed sanctions didn't stop the invasion. For now, Ukraine is under attack and calling on international help. Aruna Iyengar, BBC News.